Okay, so sometime later, we have created all the muscles in the model. And as you can see, it's uh, now starting to look quite a lot like a, like a chimpanzee. Now, the next thing we need to do is, if we're producing a model that's going to, say, walk on the surface, is we need to tell the software where the floor is and which bits of the model are able to interact with the floor. And we do this by defining these things called geoms. Um, short for geometry, I guess. So we switch it into edit mode and um, let's create some uh, some GMs that will work on the feet and um, they will basically what they do is they, they generate a contact force when they intersect with each other. So we can create um, the one on the foot first. So let's uh, get a decent look at the foot. Here we go. So left foot and let's put a contact point um, on the tip of this finger here. So typically you'd put four or five contact points on a foot if you're walking on something like a flat floor. Obviously if you're doing something more complicated like grasping you might need an awful lot more contact points. So as before it all starts by creating a marker. So this is um, left foot and we attach it to the left foot. Here we go. Uh, the orientation doesn't make any difference because we're going to use this as a spherical marker. There are some markers, uh, sort of some geoms that actually have direction, but uh, but spheres clearly don't. And and there it is. That's the the marker we've just created here. Um, then we go into the create new geom section. Uh, and this is the um, left foot geom and we attach it to the marker and if it's a sphere all we need to do is define a radius obviously this is a one meter radius that's going to be awfully big uh, bigger than we want and probably probably um, really small works well because it's sitting on the surface and we don't um, particularly want it to hold the foot too far away. So I'm going to call it a one millimeter radius. And um, there it is. You can't see it because it's inside the marker. So the marker has has no particular substance, um, but the geom does. And we can see it by um, if we turn off all the markers and we can see the one millimeter contact area on that. OK, so that's how you put in um, markers that you attach to the body but of course you also want uh, geoms that are attached to the world that you can walk on for example um, so we'll create one of those next again you need to create a marker first and um, this time it's important to create a marker um, let me get back into edit mode create a marker that's attached to the world so this is the um, the floor marker um, now we're going to put uh, this marker at position 0, 0, 0, which obviously is the default. And the way the floor works is that the X and Y of the marker define the plane and the Z defines the normal to the plane. So this will create a, a marker that will we can use to define a plane that's, um, that is horizontal. But of course, we could put it in any other orientation we wanted if we wanted to have a slope that the animal had to walk up or something like that. So we created that marker. We can now create the geom, create new geom. And this time we're creating a plane. It tells us about what we need to do here. Uh, it's gonna work on floor marker. Um, and we're gonna call it um, And there it is. So now we have uh, a plane. It's actually an infinite plane. Uh, the default sets it up with a one by one meter checkerboard pattern on it. So you can see how far your animal's gone um, and it will now interact. And now we've actually got a floor. Um, we will start to see things happen if we allow um, this to uh, fall under gravity. So let's give that a go because uh, why not? And what you can see is happening <laughs> is that um, we only created a single marker, so it's not stable. 
and of course the rest of the uh, the the model just falls straight through the floor, leaving the one single marker that we have uh, attached to the floor. So yeah, it's working exactly as expected, although perhaps not as wanted.